This is Mindy with Mindy Egan Design. Welcome everyone to the Save the Crafty YouTuber video hop. Over the next five days, many crafters are coming together to give our viewers a chance to discover other amazing card makers and help reach our monetization goals. All you have to do is watch, like, and if you enjoy my channel, I would love for you to subscribe. Then just click the link in the video description below for the next video in the hop. We have tons of prizes to give away, so be sure to leave a comment and also indicate if you are international or U.S. The more comments you leave, the better your chances of winning. My giveaway is two $25 gift certificates to Gina K Designs. The technique I'm going to share today has a couple different names. It is called water painting with distress oxides or water bleaching, I've also seen it called. I'm using this gorgeous stamp set from Gina K Designs. This is Grand Garden. It has this beautiful, huge floral image, and that is what I'm going to use to stamp my card today. So I'm using a piece of Bristol Smooth cardstock that I prepped with an anti-static powder tool. Using my Misty, I'm stamping that down with some Versa Mark ink. And then I can come in and heat emboss this with white embossing powder. So I will just sprinkle that on. And then I can go ahead and heat that up with my heat tool. Being careful not to have my heat tool sitting in the same spot for too long or it will warp the paper. Off camera, I had gone ahead and created a mask so I can lay that mask over my, my heat embossed image. And then I'm gonna stamp another one of these floral images and I'm gonna add a leaf at the very top and I'll repeat those same steps. So I'll prep that again with the anti-static powder tool, ink that up with Versamark ink, stamp that down, and then I'm gonna heat emboss this as well with the white embossing powder. Be sure to remove that mask before you do any heat embossing. If you do find there is a little bit of embossing powder sticking to your cardstock, be sure to remove that with a paintbrush before you hit that with your heat tool. Otherwise, that is going to heat up and you will have those speckles left on your floral image. Next, we're gonna work on our ink blending. So I'm starting with Barn Door Distress Oxide Inks. And I'm applying that to the bottom left-hand corner where my embossed image is. Now, I know this is really sped up, but I did post the colors I'm using up on the video screen here in the top left corner. The next one here is Candied Apple. And I'm blending that out a little bit further from the barn door, also overlapping that previous color to have a nice smooth blend. And then I'm going to come in with Abandoned Coral and do the same thing and I'll blend up towards that top right hand corner. I'm lightening up how much ink I'm applying as I get towards that corner. I don't want that to be super dark. I wanted this to be a gradual effect. Then I'm gonna come in with Seedless Preserves and I really like adding this on a second time around. It was easier to blend out. It wasn't, it didn't stand out as much but it did add a little bit deeper of a color down in that corner. And then I can continue kind of blending out those colors so it's a nice seamless blend. The more color or the darker colors you have here, the better this effect is going to look and really pop off of the card. Once that's done, I'm just going to take a rag and I'm going to buff over my embossed area so I can really make that white embossing powder pop. And now I'm going to come in and do the painting. So this is either water bleaching or water painting and I'm just taking a paintbrush with some clean water and adding a bunch of it over that area where the uh, flower is heat embossed. Because distressed oxides react with water, it's going to leave white or just a lighter color of this left on the card and that white heat embossing kind of contains the water. And I'm just dabbing up that extra water as I go. This is where you can see the darker color of ink you use is really going to make this pop off the card. Now you can see what a gorgeous effect that this leaves. And you could leave your card just as is. I'm going to take, take it one step further and add some Copic colors to this. So I'm starting off with an R46 and I'm just going in all of those corners of the flowers where they're overlapping each other. This is just going to make it stand out just a little bit more. Uh, as far as if this hurts your tips at all, I'm honestly not really sure. My tips need to be changed out anyway, so I was perfectly comfortable doing this. 
That is your choice though, so just be aware of that as you're going into it. So once I had finished going around all of those corners of the flower, I'm gonna come in with R24, and this is just to blend this out a little bit more. Now with Copic markers, if you are touching the embossed area, it is going to color your heat embossed area, but we have a fix for that, and I'll get to that in just a moment. And as you can see, I'm not being real careful because I know I can correct that Copic marker uh, over the white heat embossing. Then I'm adding a drop shadow around my area, and this is using markers C2 and C1. Now to fix where my marker had touched the white heat embossing, I'm using this isopropyl alcohol. I have a little cup here that I added that to, and I'm taking a Q-tip and I'm gonna go over all of those areas where my marker kind of covered up that heat embossing, so it's gonna remove that. And it's not hurting, it's not gonna leave any spots as far as the Distress Oxide background, but because it is alcohol, it is kind of reacting with my alcohol markers, and actually it kind of blended it a little bit better. So I was really happy with how that turned out. And I just looked over my entire image, cleaned up those white embossing lines and that's going to really make this pop. This is such a dramatic effect. And like I said, the Copic coloring is optional. You could totally have left it as is and it would still be a gorgeous card to send to somebody. For my sentiment, I'm using the stamp set from Simon Says Stamp called Ornamental and this is designed by CZ Design. It also has coordinating dies you can purchase. Here I went ahead and I heat embossed with gold embossing powder, the holidays sentiment, and I also die cut that four times so it was layered. Then I'm just lining up on my card where I want that additional sentiment to go. I'm going to use my misty corners to make sure that that is lined up straight, and then I can come in and stamp this with the Versifying Claire ink, and that's just a really nice bold black ink. I forgot to add my water spots to my Distress Oxide, so I went ahead and did that and dabbed it up with a paper towel. And that just leaves a really beautiful effect, almost like it's got sparkles around it. Then I'm going to attach this to a four and a quarter by five and a half inch card base. These are white panels you can purchase from Gina K Designs. I love them. They are fantastic and I love having them on hand so they're ready to go for my card bases. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and attach my sentiment here with some Gina K Connect glue, and I'll finish off my card by adding some sparkling clear jewels from Pretty Pink Posh. That is going to finish up my card for today, so I really hope you enjoyed this process. I will have an additional video in the future slowing this down to give some more tips and tricks with it. Be sure to leave a comment down below to be entered into the giveaways. I will have all of my supplies and more details listed on my blog. You can find that link and also the link to the next person in the video hop in the description box below. Thank you so much for stopping by and I'll catch you next time.